Pack it up, pack it in, let me begin I came to win, battle me, that's a sin I'm now Porn Adjacent. I run a tabletop game stream regularly with some porn stars which you can check out with suitable precautions in place at tabletopless.org and just know that I put as much effort into this campaign as I would any other tits or no tits. Brianna Wu is apparently involved in the production of a potential upcoming TV series based around the events of Gamergate, or at least the version of events of Gamergate which exists within the fevered mind of the deranged and relentlessly self-promoting Brianna Wu. This really pisses me off to no end. The narrative is entirely dominated by the point of view of people like Brianna Wu, whose version of events bears little or no relation to anything that actually happened. And so when something like this happens, uh, I feel called to set the record straight, which is why I wrote the book Inside Gamegate, a reading of which you can find in the playlists on this channel. So, first, let's talk about Brianna Wu. Brianna Wu, and I'm hesitant to dead name even someone like Brianna Wu, but uh, Brianna Wu was once John Flint. And the reason I think it is acceptable to dead name people in instances like this is because of the case of Dr. V and the Magic Putter, which you can you can look up online. But what it boils down to is that transitioning should not allow you to escape your past if you have a criminal history or a controversial history or a history of conning and defrauding people. And I believe that to be the case, that's my personal opinion, about Brianna Wu. John Flint put out a tremendous amount of really bad fetish art the pre-transition the style of which can be seen in Brianna Wu's quote game unquote you can see the same style you can see a lot of fetishes and weirdness and and strangeness and certainly not the kind of uh, archly feminist champion of women sort of sort of point of view that you can see them putting forward post transition in regards to Gamergate itself Wu harassed themselves they created alternate accounts to engage in harassment they used images to do with autistic kids to try and troll Gamergate they never left their home. That is a fabrication, as proven with video evidence from interviews with them. Basically, Wu just tried to make themselves the center of attention when it came to Gamergate and used the, the trolling and criticism that they got as well as some small amount of genuine harassment as a shield against criticism of her, quote, game, unquote and behavior and everything else and you know it worked to a degree it may have irked zoe quinn anita sarkeesian and other people who inserted themselves because we was taking the spotlight away from them unduly but it did overall work Wu was much more willing to talk to the media and so on and to put themselves forward as a as a face as a victim and even comedically to try and use it to get elected to office. The point is Wu is a dishonest actor, um, two-faced with uh, history at odds with the image that they try to project and with a record of lying and inserting themselves into things as a way to garner publicity and attention. Wu is an upper, upper middle class, spoon-fed, typical sort of activisty type of person with absolutely no connection to the working class or any real difficulty whatsoever 
what few difficulties they might have from their gender transition is used as a shield and a way to garner attention. So yes, this production produced by Mind Riot Entertainment or, or whatever they're called is likely to be an unrepresentative, misrepresentative, absolute fucking disaster. So, if Gamergate was not an online harassment campaign against uh, women in gaming, what was it? Well, you can go and check out my playlist, but here's a very, very quick and cursory recap. At some point in 2014, one of Zoe Quinn's um, former boyfriends, Aaron Gajoni, uh, put a post up called The Zoe Post. After consulting with some of his progressive female friends and so on, and this was basically a warning to anyone who was going to get involved with Zoe, that she was emotionally abusive, manipulative, a rapist by her own alleged standards, um, and basically that she was bad news bears for, for all concerned. If the genders had been reversed, this would have been completely unremarkable, nobody would have cared. And if Zoe Quinn wasn't a, a, a fated computer programmer, sort of, who had had a, a somewhat famous game that the gaming community had reacted badly to in the case of uh, Depression Quest, then also nobody would have paid any attention. But because it was a man complaining about a woman and her horrible behaviour in relationships, and because she had some level of notoriety and was on gamers' radar, this got picked up on and became a small online controversy called Five Guys Burgers and Fries because Zoe had fucked around on Erem with about five people. So far, who cares, right? Bit of internet drama, someone who was on gamers' radar as uh, basically a, a sued and nobody really cares. That, this is the point at which I got involved because I had previously backed Zoe Quinn uh, as a sufferer of depression. I had recommended Depression Quest to people to get some idea, some basic idea of what it was like living with depression. Uh, and I'd financially backed her, actually. So I was invested, I was interested, but when I found out it was just a kind of sexual controversy, who gives a fuck, basically? <laughs> However, it then emerged that some or all of the people with whom she had been uh, sexually involved were people in the indie computer game scene, were people in games media, and so on. And so this was dubbed the Quinspiracy, in that it seemed like the part, the part of the reason that someone so untalented was being fated and treated as a big deal by games media and indie games communities and so on. It seemed like this may have possibly been because she was fucking them, right? Not necessarily much of a big deal, but more of a big deal because things like that are supposed to be disclosed. If you're boning somebody and you're writing an article about them, or reviewing their material, or supporting their endeavours financially or whatever, you're supposed to reveal that when you're in media, or if you're a judge in a competition, you know, that sort of thing, all of which are examples of things that, that did happen. However, there was no disclosure. Games journalism has always been a cesspit when it comes to journalistic ethics, but even so, this was particularly egregious because indie games had presented themselves as being a, a, a progressive, upstanding alternative, and a lot of the game's media had become very critical of things like sexual depiction, uh, gender depiction, uh, inclusivity, all of that, and yet here they were caught with their hands in the honeypot, <laughs> right? Uh, shown to have feet of clay, to be hypocrites, who, for all their proclaimed ethics, didn't really have them and they'd long been at odds with the gaming community over these sorts of things. And so, yeah, everything was primed and set up for people to be outraged and annoyed at the hypocrisy. We're still not at Gamergate itself. That started, it was dubbed by Adam Baldwin of all people on social media, but that started when a sort of fight back from the games media, the people who were being 
harshly criticised and called out for their hypocrisy and lack of ethics, when they basically colluded using a, a back-channel sort of chat uh, between lots of people within games media to put out a bunch of articles across a whole bunch of websites basically declaring that the gamer identity was both dead and toxic. The gamers are dead articles this was called. And this also came along with an immense amount of pressure on many sites to censor any mention of what was going on in their chat forums, um, even on 4chan for God's sake, somewhere where there should never have been any censorship whatsoever. So that then started Gamergate. So Gamergate was outrage amongst the customers, the consumers of games over a lack of ethics and a lack of disclosure within games media. Um, the indie games were hypocrites, um, cynical and exploitative. The Gamers Are Dead articles, the mass online censorship, that's what it was about. Was there harassment? Well, I was harassed by the opposite side. People who didn't feel the need to hide behind anonymity and trolling. Most of it was probably trolling. The threats, the bomb threats, the threats of violence that people like Wu received were investigated by both local and national law enforcement and were found to have no merit whatsoever. Whereas the bomb threats against gaming game meetups and so on were found to be credible by investigating officers. Trolls confused the whole thing and made it very easy for people to throw up a screen and to say that it was all harassment when these were in fact uninvested, uninvolved trolls picking on both sides. But there was only one narrative in the media. There was only one narrative in the media because it was the media under assault and they came together to defend themselves. And with the mass online censorship, there was very little way for anyone to present the countervailing narrative. So that's, that's what Gamergate was. Outrage amongst consumers against things that had been done which were wrong. Uh, not a harassment campaign. Was there harassment? Sure. Not much compared to the overall amount of stuff that was going on. And that's really an end to it. So, now you know what really happened. And if you want a much deeper account of what really happened, go check out my playlist. Zang. The Atomic Age with its A-bombs, transistorized radios, jet engines, and a new breed of dangerous supervillain requires heroes to face the challenge. That's where you come in. The world needs you, Agent. Agent of Swing. Ladies and gentlemen, a single bottle of Reverend Dr. Grimm's Miracle Elixir will solve your constipation, dissipation, excapation, obstipation, extirpation, bastardization, demoralization, amortization, accusation, disorganization, boulderization, malversation, dehumanization, plagiarization, demonization, feminization, localization, categorization, stigmatization, monetization, pulverization, and rationalization, sterilization, victimization, infatuation, insinuation, vexation, Masturbation, perturbation, litigation, subjugation, and the French pox, or your money back, as used by the crowned heads of Europe.